Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood everybody on what promises to be quite a gloomy overcast day with a few spells of rain so don't be surprised by the end of this episode if you see me walking around in some wet clothes. Now I'm beginning this one really early in the morning because I've got plenty to do today and I'm starting on an industrial estate. If I just turn the camera around you can see the extent of this industrial estate. It's quite a large area. I know there's not many buildings you can see here but trust me there are plenty just a lot of them are kind of off limits to me. But uh, yeah, the reason this is such a big industrial estate is because it used to be a colliery and it belonged to Billsthorpe. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. This week, Newark and Sherwood takes us to one of its former mining communities, namely Billsthorpe. Billsthorpe means the village of Builder or Bildy, although little knowledge on either person exists. Situated just north of Farnsfield and east of the A614, Billsthorpe for many years was the location of Billsthorpe Colliery, which is now an industrial estate. It was around that mine, though, that the village experienced massive growth in the 20th century, something we've become accustomed to in these former mining areas. For centuries though, this was a quiet agricultural village. That was until the Stanton Ironworks began sinking the pit in 1925. You remember them, right? More building took place in Billsthorpe after World War II, and the colliery eventually closed in 1997. The colliery buildings were demolished and a business park has been developed on part of the site. Oddly though, the pump house still survives. To the south of the pit village is a built-up area known as Billsthorpe Moor, due to its location on what was once flat open moorland. Together the two areas combine to form one unified village with the Church of St Margaret in its centre. Billsthorpe was for a long time the headquarters of the local St John Ambulance and it soon could be the site of an incinerator, although just by walking around here you can tell that's something the locals definitely do not want. Let's go! We begin outside the former colliery, a massive area of land off Eakring Road. It's now an industrial estate, but between the years of 1927 and 1997, this part of the parish was all about coal. The colliery was actually begun in 1925 with two shafts and wasn't fully completed until 1928. In 1947, it was taken over by the National Coal Board and was run by British Coal from 1986 until its eventual closure 11 years later. In total, 77 people died whilst working here, the biggest loss of life occurring in 1927 when 14 men were killed. There was a disaster in 1993 too, which killed two men thanks to a roof collapse. Still industrial and still important, the colliery site can be easily accessed by the local bus services, the 27X and the 27B, which both run from Mansfield. 
And also not far away from the colliery is Billsthorpe Sports Ground, home of Billsthorpe United Football Club. Our main walk begins on Forest Link, which is where the Southall Trail makes another appearance. In fact, this is the Billstop end of the trail. You might remember in the Farnsfield episode we saw the junction where two former railway lines converged. The line provided Billstop Colliery with a rail connection, and it ran through this very area. It's odd to think that at one time trains would have been rumbling through what is now a quiet little street. At the end of Forest Link you come to a roundabout, again this is former railway land, and these two green vans were right on cue. They came from Enver, a waste management facility off Brailwood Road. A lot of former railway land has been built upon, as well as Forest Link there's also Old Bridge Way, which now occupies an area to the north of the old railway line. And between that and the pit village is Crompton Road Park. Billstop has two parks, the other being Maid Marion, we'll catch that in a bit. So this playing field gives you a good idea of the extent of the new builds here in Billsthorpe. They all sort of run along the southern edge of it, whilst to the north is the old pit village. And that is where I'm about to take myself right now. In its sort of environs, there's a museum, a heritage museum. We'll talk about that when we get to it, but it's quite a way around this route yet. Let's explore the rest of the village. That right there is Billsthorpe Flying High Academy, the local primary school. The building it occupies is the original village school. Named Crompton View, it was built by the County Council in 1926. The building is of brick in classical style, probably to designs by the county architects team. Now we've reached Scarborough Road and we're heading for the Crescent. Most of Billsthorpe is built of houses that look similar to these, pit houses I like to call them. In the centre of the Crescent is Billsthorpe Miners Welfare, a social club originally provided by the colliery for its workers. It's still going strong today, despite the lack of actual colliery workers. It was built in 1958 to the designs of Michael Moss, and it stands on the site of the now demolished St Luke's Church. The Crescent is also where you'll find a branch of Tesco, established in 2020, and a range of other shops as well. There's plenty for the locals here. And there's a library here as well, that's the building you can see behind me. This is the sort of de facto centre of Billsthorpe, as, as it were, but uh, it's kind of out of the way to sort of the, the, the west of the village, and the main sort of village is all to the east, but this is the bit, the bit where you come for the shops and things like that. I suppose you could call it the centre, even though it's not actually in the centre, if that makes any sense. We're going to carry on around this loop a little bit, and then head up towards Mickledale Lane, and start to make our way back across to the main road. This next section is very residential. Effectively what we're doing here is forming a loop via Allendale, Valley Road and Valley Approach to end up at the Stanton Arms. The pub of course is named after the Stanton Ironworks, and its signboard even shows a Stanton coal truck, like the one we encountered in Stanton by Dale. Before we get there we have an old Methodist church. Built with this estate in the late 1950s, this was originally a cooperative store. It's recently been sold at auction, going for £71,000. The modern Methodist church here can be found where Valley Road meets Valley Approach. This area is known as the Green, which isn't very green really, is it? This building is the Green Community Centre, which holds a worship service on the first and third Sunday of every month. And then we come to the Stanton Arms, one of the most impressive buildings in Billsthorpe. Built in the arts and crafts style, it still retains its original layout, as shown on a map in 1939. Okay, so now we're on Mickledale Lane, and just next door to the pub there, the Stanton Arms, is Billsthorpe Surgery, which you can see in your shot right now. Now, if you turn around here and look across the road, you'll see a street that heads off in a kind of southeasterly direction over here. There's a path off that which will take us to Billstorp Heritage Museum. That's next.
This is the Billstorp Heritage Museum. Focusing on the mining history of the village, it was opened in 2014, and you can visit it on selected days of the week. Outside it, you'll find a statue of a miner. This was originally erected outside the colliery itself, but was later moved to the museum's entrance. Inside, the museum has a wealth of original material relating to the history of the colliery village. It's well worth a visit if you're interested. It can be found at the rear of Billsthorpe's Village Hall. Now this has seen better days. For the past few years, the Village Hall has laid empty and abandoned. It was originally built by the Colliery Company in the 1920s. On its front wall is a clock which was added in 2013 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Queen's coronation in 1953. And outside all of this is a parish notice board. You can all tick off Billstorp guys, but like a true village idiot, I'd left my cards in the car. Again. So I can't put a card on this board for obvious reasons, but this notice board does give us a talking point. You may have noticed as we've walked around the village, plenty of yellow signs that say no incinerator. Well, they're all to do with the Billstorp incinerator. And apparently the residents around here don't want it. That is the subject of today's special section. In 2016, the UK government gave the green light to a brand new renewable energy plant being built on the site of Billsthorpe Colliery. That plant would involve an incinerator which would generate energy by burning waste. However, just walking around the village, you can clearly see that the locals here do not want it. With climate change as their main concern, a local action group by the acronym RAGE have launched a campaign to stop the construction of the incinerator. If built, they claim it will have 60 meter high chimneys and will burn up to 200,000 tonnes of waste each year. That would create 200,000 tonnes of CO2, as an incinerator produces one tonne per tonne of waste burnt. Plans have been continually delayed as a result of these protests. Vital Energy, the company behind the project, have no legal obligation to consult the public, but Rage continue to fight their proposals. The last section of the main walk sees us pass a pharmacy which doubles as the village's post office. I don't think I've ever seen that combination before. Just beyond this is the Miner's Memorial Garden. This includes a monument of a miner's lamp constructed out of one piece of sandstone. It was chosen from a short list of creative drawings by the children from the local school and it was unveiled on the 4th of October 2011. Touching. Out onto Eakering Road now and here's Billstorp Fisheries. This was created from the remains of an old slag heap from Billstorp Colliery, its members only. Just a couple of landmarks left. One of them is the Scout Hut, seen here at the end of Old Bridge Way, and just opposite this, under a canopy of trees, we'll find the War Memorial. It's a small stone cairn, this one, and it lists 16 names in total, four from World War I and 12 from World War II. It was unveiled in 1988. And from the War Memorial, it's a simple walk back down Forest Link to where we began at the Southall Trail. Now, if you live in Billsthorpe, you're probably thinking to yourself about now, well, that's not everything. Correct, it's not, because Billsthorpe, if you don't know, is in two pieces. I've walked around the northern section of Billsthorpe, and I'm going to drive around the southern section. And in between, there's a road on which is the church, and that's our next landmark. So this area of the village is much different. We're in the oldest part of Billsthorpe now, which grew up around the Church of St Margaret of Antioch. It seems quite difficult to date this church with any certainty. Whilst records do show the presence of a priest here in the 13th century, the earliest fabric of the body of the church can only be dated to the 14th. Inside are the remains of a stone preaching cross, predating the church itself. It's preserved in a glass case in the south transept. The most notable grave in its churchyard is this one. Here in this curbed tomb lies the first Baron Saville. Keep that name in mind, next week's episode will reveal all. Opposite the church is a big white house. That's the old rectory. 
Part of this was taken over as offices for the colliery by Stanton Ironworks. It's now a private dwelling. And next door is the new rectory. This area of the village also has a cemetery, which is right next door to this. It's a nice area. So to finish, we're driving around Billsthorpe Moor. This area lies to the southeastern corner of the parish where Kirklington Road meets Farnsfield Road. It's technically classed as a suburb of Billsthorpe Village, and it's primarily residential, lying one third of a mile to the south of the traditional centre, close to the church. Billsthorpe Moor can also refer to the wider location south of the built-up area, for which there are open fields and farmland to the east, west and south. It's generally flat, hence the term moor. Around the built-up area, the land is approximately 70 metres above sea level, with its highest point coming in at 95. Billsthorpe Moor was first recorded in 1840 as a distinguishable settlement. Maps at the turn of the 20th century showed a cluster of residences, as well as a small pool known as the Sow Dam, which was located by the modern-day Oak Tree Drive. Between the late 1950s and the 1970s, Billsthorpe Moor would expand, mainly with housing. Wicker or Wycar Lees was a large farmhouse to the southwest of the area and was owned by the Rufford Abbey Estate until 1938. It was later repurposed as a nursing home for disabled patients. Billsthorpe Moor used to have a school in this area for much of the 20th century, but that's now gone. One thing that is still here though is Maid Marion Park, which is the second of the two in Billsthorpe. It's to our left here. And there are shops too. This row on Kirklington Road was built with the housing in between the 1950s and 1970s, catering for the needs of all the new residents. And here's a nice way to end. Off Kirklington Road is Billsthorpe's other pub, the Copper Beach. A former farmhouse dating back to 1812, it's named after a magnificent Copper Beach tree which towers over its entranceway. It was converted into a pub in 1985 by local footballing legend Jim Gibson. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.